Douglas Carswell is with me now. Four million people voted for us, which is great, but unfortunately the electoral system means it's very difficult to convert that into seats. But, you know, it's disappointing. But I think there are good reasons for us to actually be, be, be cheerful. We got four million votes, which is extraordinary uh, success. Um, we're going to get a referendum in the next two or three years on EU membership, which is one of our core reasons for existing. And, you know, the other reason why we need a bit of optimism is because optimism works in politics. And I think we perhaps need a little bit more of it. But if you are going to get a referendum, as you've said, though uh, many in UKIP were denying it before the election, you now seem to accept that Mr Cameron will well, deliver There is a majority a in the House of Commons for a referendum, yeah. and that's a historic sure. event. It hasn't been like that for 30 but, years. Uh, but once we've had the referendum, whatever the result, whether it's in or out, what's the purpose of UKIP? Well, I think UKIP's future lies in replacing a corporatist dirigiste Labour Party. It's significant we came second in 120 seats, many of those seats in the north of England. The disaffection that people in Scotland clearly feel towards the Labour Party doesn't stop at the border. It stretches all the way down into the old Labour heartland. And I think there's a tremendous future for UKIP in displacing the Labour Party with a, a, a sort of radical popular capitalism. You're not going to get uh, any real alternative from um, the, the remains of Keir Hardy's party. I think but, we need to. But the Scottish different. Nationalists don't stand for a radical popular capitalism. They stand in, in, in for a, 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 a position uh, which is widely seen as to the left of Labour. In, That's in, pretty in, hard for UKIP in, to in, do that. Don't. But I, I'm, I'm absolutely convinced as a free marketeer that the case for um, the free market, the case for um, uh, popular capitalism, has never been easier to make. The problem is that the uh, 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 corporatist system we have in this country is giving capitalism a bad name. But many of these uh, working class communities, particularly in the north, where you've come second, and they are disillusioned with labour. But they're disillusioned with labour because they feel that under the market system they've lost out. People have done well, but they haven't. I don't understand how more market is going to attract them to you. Well, I think if we had a... a, a I think there's a huge space in the political um, ecology, if you like, for a, a genuine uh, radical uh, populist uh, free market alternative that is not in cahoots with big business and corporatism. You're going to and sell that in Hull, but in it, Huddersfield, it, 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 in Rochdale. It's going down pretty well, well in Clacton. But that's, well, yeah, Clacton is a, is a different place, and even then it may be because it's gone well in Clacton. I think because in the age you of, have a big personal Andrew, following Andrew, there, the don't age, you? In the age of Amazon, the case for uh, free trade has never been easier to make. We need to start making it. In an age where bank bailouts are outrageously putting public money into, into the bank uh, into the pockets of big corporatist interests. I think the case for real, genuine free market reform can be made. We need to make it. So, That's in terms of the market, you would let me get this right. In terms of the market, you would position yourself to the right of Mr. Cameron and hope to sweep the Labour I North. I would like to. I would like to position myself round about where, where where the old Gladstonian Liberal Party used to be, and they used to do yeah. rather well in the North of England. I seem to remember. Yeah, uh, if you a long in, time if ago. You believe Even in, I wasn't if, around when if, that was if, happening. If you believe in uh, localism, returning power to, to civic communities, if you believe in limited government, if you believe in accountable politics, I think there's a huge new, exciting agenda that can uh, uh, create. Um, uh, 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 we've got a very firm base already. We, as I say, we came second in 120 seats. And but, I think there's a huge opportunity there. My, my point is, to come back to this, because I think it's the important, I know you're all, we're all very happy you came, it's a consolation prize, you came second in all these seats and only first in your seat. But it may just be if we have the referendum and the European result is taken and immigration is no longer such a big issue, as it has been, and you're not that fond of harping on about immigration anyway, that you will just seem an irrelevance by 2020. Well, I, I beg to differ. I think the real driver for UKIP and something that we need to, to, to get even better at doing is there's this tremendous sense of anti-politics, um, a tremendous sense that the established political parties mm. are not really doing it. I mean, we talk about the Conservatives having a great success, and they, used them. They, they won this election. They only got 36% of the vote. I think there's space for a new party okay. that comes in and creates the op opportunity for real far-reaching political reform. Uh, isn't the realistic thing for you to politely ask the Conservatives to let you back in? No. The Tory party is far too patrician and corporatist for, for, for me. Um, I will, as UKIP's MP, be pragmatic. If they do sensible things that are in, in keeping with, 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 with change and reform, I will support it. Mm. But um, I, I, I feel that the, the future for, for UKIP is looking bright. We, 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 we've, we're in a good position, I think, to make big gains in 2020. And um, I'm very excited about, about this who, European referendum. Who would be the person that could most deliver as leader the 
strategy you've outlined to me this morning? Well, I've ruled myself out. And the reason I've ruled myself out is because I can think of at least half a dozen people who could do a much better job. So you've who got, would you like? Uh, you've got a choice between, I think, Patrick Flynn, Suzanne Evans, mm. uh, Stephen Wolfe, uh, uh, Paul Nuttall. I, I, I know the people. choice. Who would you like? Uh, let's wait and see. Let's have a conversation. Let's see what they've got to offer in terms of tone, in terms of style, um, in terms of, of well, approach. Mr. Farage has strangely left the op opportunity open for that he could stand again. Would you welcome that or will you dissuade him from it? I, I think Nigel's earned the right to have a bit of, bit of time and I think all of us, all 50,000 of us in the party, need to, need, need to reflect. We're a mature party, mm. we're not a, a, a one-man sure. show. So I should think he we stand need to again reflect. or shouldn't he? I, I think we need, to, we need to listen to what the other candidates have to say in terms of tone and style and I think we need to take a considered decision in September. Very well. Douglas Gazel, thank, thank you very much.